Good morning, everyone. Say hi to me. Ah, praise the Lord. Hey, some of you did not. Come, come, come. Hi to me. Ah, praise God, praise God. That helps me loads. Two weeks ago, Pastor Glenn shared on Restored to Restore. And it has to do with healing the wounded. And last week, Pastor Derek Fu shared on strengthening the weak. And this morning, I will be touching on supporting the lonely. And the title of my sermon is Support, Leave No One Behind. Despite a myriad of entertainment options, shopping and gaming apps available at our fingertips, battling loneliness can be a real challenge in our fast-paced, digitalized world. If anyone truly understood loneliness, I believe it must be Jesus. Let's take a moment to reflect on Jesus' crucifixion. With his hands and feet pierced on the cross for our sins, for your sin, for my sins, and in his pain, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? One thing we must always remember is that God never intended for any one of us to be lonely. As believers, we may experience moments of loneliness, but we will never be alone because God is always with us. Can, can we say an amen? Amen. The Bible recorded for us in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse it, it says this, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. What is loneliness? Loneliness, loneliness is the distressing feeling of disconnection. Being out of contact and a loss of intimacy or belonging, which results in feelings of abandonment, rejection, being unwanted. People can become lonely or socially separated for a few reasons, such as getting weaker physically, or no one or or no longer having the energy to socialize. For some, challenging events like retrenchment, the deaths of loved ones, illness or disability cause them to withdraw from connecting with others. No matter what the cause is, it is surprisingly easy for anyone to feel lonely and helpless. It, if not mindful, severe sense of loneliness can lead to depression and a major decline in a person's physical health and well-being. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminded us that do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This verse tells us that the heart of God reaches out also to the lonely, and He is always with His people, strengthening them in difficult times. Not only that, it serves as a reminder to you and I, to all of us, as God's chosen people, we are to extend support and care for those who may be lonely around us. It starts from the household of faith, our fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord, and extend to our pre-believing family, loved ones, relatives, friends, and our community. Psalm 68 verse 6, it says this, God sets the lonely in families. 
God is the ultimate source of love and cares for the lonely and the abandoned. You and I, we are Jesus' ambassadors to share God's acceptance and love with them. And this morning, let us take some time to examine concrete ways in which we can extend our love our support to people who may be lonely around us. I would like to use the acronym SUPPORT as a guide that and we shall embark on this journey to provide support as a friend to the lonely. First of all, S. It has to do with show kindness. Let's seek out the lonely and love them through deeds of kindness. Genuine acts of kindness will create an atmosphere of acceptance and understanding and we will let those who feel lonely know that they are cherished and accepted. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2, it says this, carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So brothers and sisters, by meeting their tangible needs, you and I are showing practical love in journeying alongside with them through their challenges. That's where we reach out to them who may be suffering in silence, You know, and extend our love and support no matter how small these helps might be. First of all, what we can do in that simple act is surprise them with small gestures of kindness like handwritten note of an encouragement. Uh, Letting know that, hey, I'm praying for you. You are in my mind. Uh, A thoughtful gift or a comforting meal. And then we can keep in touch and check in with them on a regular basis. Keep them in your thoughts and send them a simple WhatsApp message or make a phone call. You know, a simple message or a call goes a long way. And then next, what we can do Spend some time with them. Go for a walk together. Participate in an activity. Can I say, they enjoy. And of course, uh, you try to enjoy. <laughs> but what I want to say is this. It is not so much on, oh, because I don't enjoy this activity, so, so no, I'm not going. But I think what we can do is, because we are reaching out to the lonely, they have their own way you know, preferred way of their activity and let's us reach out to them, not based on what I like, but what they would like to. And when, you, when we do that, when, when we spend time with them, guess what? We are sharing our life with them to create positive experiences and memories. You know, one day, this pastor mentioned that he was given a rose flower to pin on the, the lapel of his suit, okay, somewhere around here, huh? of every, sun, in, every Sunday. And because he always got a flower on Sunday morning, he did not actually think of it much. So one day, one Sunday morning, as he was leaving the service, a small boy came up to him and said, Pastor, what are you going to do with that flower. Before the pastor could answer, the boy said, "Um, I would like it if you were just going to throw the flower away. And at that point, the pastor smiled and told him, no worries, you can have the flower. And then the pastor asked the boy, what are you going to do with this flower? The little boy looked up to the pastor and said, well, I'm going to give it to my granny. My father and my mother got divorced last year and I was living with my mother. But when she married again, she wanted me to go to live with my father. So I lived with my dad for a while. But then guess what? My dad told me I could not stay and he sent me 
to live with my grandmother. My grandma is so good to me, and he cooks for, she cooks for me, and he, she takes care of me. She has been so good to me that I want to give that pretty flower to her for loving me. And when the little boy finished, the pastor could hardly speak, and as he was so moved, he reached out and unpinned his flower, and he looked at the little boy and said, Son, that's the nicest thing I have ever heard, but you can't have this flower because it's not enough. If you will right now look in front of the pulpit, you will see a big bouquet of flowers. I want you to take those to your granny because she deserves the very best. And as if the pastor hadn't been touched enough already, guess what? The boy made one last statement and said this. What a wonderful day. I asked for one flower and got a whole bunch of it. How often do we brighten up the lives of others with special acts of kindness? How often do we look for opportunities to touch someone with God's love? Just like this pastor, you and I can make a difference in the lives of the people around us, especially the lonely. Now look at the letter U. We are to understand them. A farmer planted a sign advertising the puppies that he wanted to sell and when he was about to drive the last nail to the post, into the post, he felt a tuck on his overalls and when he looked down into, looked down, he saw the eyes of the little boy and he said, can I have a puppy? The farmer said, sure, of course, you can have that. And with that, he let out a whistle. Wee, wee. I don't know how to do it. Huh? Here, Minnie, he called. And out from the doghouse ran Minnie, followed by four little balls of fur. The little boy's eyes danced with delight, sparkled. As the dogs made their way to the owner, the little boy noticed something else stirring in the doghouse. Slowly, another very, very small puppy appeared. In somewhat an awkward manner, the little puppy began hobbling towards the others, doing its best to catch up. And he told the farmer, I want that last one, the little one. And then the farmer looked at him, son, you don't want that puppy. He will never be able to run and play with you like these other dogs would. And with that little boy stepped back from the fence, reached down and began to roll up the leg of his trousers. In so doing, he revealed a steel brace running down both sides of his leg, attaching itself to specially made shoes. And looking up to the farmer. He said, sir, you see, I don't, want, I don't run too well myself. And he will need someone who understands. To support, to truly support someone, we need to understand them. We need to take time to listen to their struggles, to listen to their pain, their emotions. Romans chapter 12, verse 15 tells us, Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. This allows us to connect on a deeper level and respond with care and sensitivity. What do you mean by to understand them? That's where we need to practice active listening where we offer a listening ear to them unconditionally without judging them, without interrupting them. 
By so doing, we are showing that genuinely we are interested in their stories, their struggles and joys. We ought to be attentive to their words, body language, emotions. Our attentiveness will validate their experiences and communicates our acceptance. Not only do we listen actively, we acknowledge their struggles and affirm their worth. That's where we shouldn't dismiss their feelings or minimize their pain or undermine their efforts by trying to solve their problems for themselves. Sometimes we're saying, ah, yeah, very chong, hey, you know. Sometimes you listen, ah, chong, hey, cannot think it. And that's you're just shut off, shut off. But that's not the way. We are not validating their. And that's where we, we, we need to acknowledge. And often, can I say this, to the lonely, simply knowing that someone cares and is willing to listen provides immense, immense comfort and support to them. Now, letter P. P has to do with persist and be patient. It is so important to be patient and persistent in our efforts to befriend and support the lonely. Generally, people may not readily open their hearts and share right away. Right? Isn't it so? Knob your head. No? Do you disagree? You agree? Yes, generally people won't. And more so for the lonely. And sometimes People who are lonely may struggle with trust or have complex emotional needs. And therefore, building trust and meaningful relationships takes time. And by patiently standing by them, we demonstrate God's love through our consistent presence and support. And can I say this? If they are not comfortable to speak, there is, no, there is no need to force a conversation. And that's where we consistently reach out and connect, be reliable and continue to love and support them. Don't give up. Press on. Be persistent. Always remember, even small acts of kindness can have a profound impact on someone's life. It is said this, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. So true. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, it tells us, instructs us, let us not become weary in doing good for at the appropriate at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And then it continues, Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. The Bible encourages us not to grow weary, not to grow tired in doing good, even if we may not see the immediate results. And by persevering in supporting the lonely, we trust that God's purposes will be accomplished in His timing. We touch on SUP, and the next P has to do with to pray for and with them. Praying for the lonely is a practical and effective way for Christians to have a significant impact on them. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says that we are to pray continually. And this is where we are committed to pray regularly for them. When we commit to pray for the lonely, we are embarking into a journey of intercessions that goes beyond empathy. That's where we lift their burdens, their struggles, and their deepest desires to God, who hears all prayers. That is an intentional act of commitment and love. However, 
It is not enough just to say, just to pray for them. Let us set a time, let us set aside time to pray together with them. On a regular basis. Assuring them that God is always present, providing comfort, guidance, and unconditional love. This is where praying for and with the lonely is an active invitation for God to intervene in their lives. And therefore, may we open our hearts and minds to willing to connect with these loved ones, with these precious souls, precious lives, and help them to step out of their comfort zone and be present in their most most vulnerable moments. Prayers, brothers and sisters, encourage us to engage in a genuine faith-based relationships as opposed to the superficial ones. And then we look at the O. O has to do with offer connection. Loneliness stems from a lack of social connection, which can be overwhelming. However, it can be reduced by fostering a sense of community and belonging. Romans chapter 12, verse 5, it says this, So in Christ, we, though many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. The early church is depicted in Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47, as a vibrant, not just vibrant, but unified community of faith and fellowship. That's where they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, the fellowship, the breaking of bread and prayer. And it's so important to give those who felt lonely a sense of belonging. We will encourage community involvement by fostering meaningful friendships. We exist, assist them in connecting to groups, to small groups, to activities or activities where they can communicate with like-minded people and develop sustaining relationships. Basically, what I want to say is this. We need to connect them to different ones. And I think it is good, not so much of like a big group because it will be too much for them. But connect to one, two, or even in the small group or do certain activities, simple activities together, that will help a lot. No one uh, will put loneliness on the head right there. People who can smile and then do things as usual, but they may face loneliness. And that's where we need to look out for them. According to the Bible, Zacchaeus was a, was a tax collector and we know that tax collector was despised and rejected by the community. Definitely. And despite his riches, I, fe- I believe he felt pronou- profound loneliness and yearned for a connection with something greater than himself. And that's where one day, when Jesus passed through Jericho, Zacchaeus was determined to capture a glimpse of him. You know, he was a, he was small in size and due to that s- small stature, he encountered the, the challenge of a large crowd obstructing his view. Quabo. But yet, he climbed a sycamore tree dem- that demonstrate his determined determination and an unyielding desire to communicate with Jesus. And Jesus saw Zacchaeus in the crowd and to everyone's astonishment, Jesus called by his name and said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Today, I must remain at your home. This unexpected invitation not only surprised Zacchaeus, but also revealed 
Jesus's willingness to reach out to the lonely and the outcast. Jesus, if we read the portion of scripture in Luke chapter 19, Jesus' encounter with Zacchaeus had a transformative effect on him. In the response to the grace he had received, he vowed to give half of his possessions to the needy and to return fourfold what he had unjustly taken. And that's where Zacchaeus discovered forgiveness and acceptance in a community that offered to support him, offer him support, companionship, and the chance to make restitution for his past actions. This story demonstrates and tells us powerfully the importance of providing opportunities for the lonely to connect with others. It emphasizes the need to look beyond the superficial appearances, prejudices, and social barriers in order to extend genuine fellowship to those yearning for a community. And therefore, this entails, therefore we must make special efforts to reach out to individuals who may feel excluded or lonely. Brothers and sisters, let us intentionally extend invitation to bridge the lonely and connect them to a small group of friends, whether be it inviting them to social gatherings, encouraging their participation in small groups, or simply engaging them in meaningful conversations in which their stories are shared and heard. Let's be a church, shall Let's be a church that actively seeks out the lonely and provides them with the opportunities for social interaction where they can feel belonged and accepted. What does the letter R stand for? R has to do with to remind them of their worth. In a culture that emphasizes comparison, emphasizes achievement and external validation, it is very easy to lose sight of our inherent worth. Amid life's complexities, the lonely may feel insignificant or question their purpose on this earth. Often loneliness envelops us under the cover of self-doubt. And therefore it is crucial to provide meaningful reminders that can uplift their spirits and restore their sense of self-worth. We must constantly remind them, the lonely, that they are immeasurable, valuable in the sight of God. And according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, they are God's masterpiece. They are God's handiwork. I love Psalms 139, verse 13 and 14, where it beautiful expresses, beautifully expresses the intimate involvement of God in our, in our creation, in our lives. It says this, For you form my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Brothers and sisters, we are wonderfully and fearfully made by God himself. And we want to remind those who are lonely because sometimes for the lonely, they are so stuck into the situation, they keep thinking more on the negative. They cannot come out of it, but that's where, and that makes them feel lesser. And that's where we need to remind them, not in a naggy way, not in a like scolding way, 
but just remind them, remind them in love who they are in the Lord. Let me share with you the differences between a servant, a worker, or a child. The servant is accepted and appreciated on the basis of what he does. The child, on the, on the other hand, is on the basis of who he is. The servant starts the day anxious and worried, wondering if his work will really please his master. The child rests in the secure love of his family. The servant is accepted because of his workmanship and the son or daughter is accepted because of a relationship. The servant is accepted because of his productivity and performance. The child belongs because of his position as a person. And at the end of the day, the servant has the peace of mind only if he is sure he has proven his worth by his work. The next morning, his anxiety begins anew. But for the child, the child can be secured all day and know that tomorrow won't change his status. When a servant fails, his whole position is at stake. He might lose his job. But when a child fails, he will be grieved because he has hurt his parents and he will be corrected and disciplined. But he is not afraid of being thrown out. His basic confidence is in belonging and being loved. His performance does not change the stability of his position. Isn't it? Have you ever said that? Hey, tell your child, children, uh, I didn't score, you score below whatever, I shall kick you out. Here you go, go out. My quality life, no money, no anything. No. Right? Even if they make a boo boo out of it, they are still your child. Right? With your surname. Following your surname. That's the relationship. And that's the relationship of us with God. That's where every one of us is a child of God and we must be people who remind everyone, especially the lonely, of their value in God's eyes. I only have this, the money here. No matter how I crush it, I throw it, I stamp on it, that value still remains. And I'm sure if I say, hey, who wants it? You say, of course, lah, money, why? Why the one? But what I want to say is, no matter how crushed, even if I ever drop it in somewhere, you'll still pick it up. Because the value is there. And likewise, our relationship, we are the child of God. Our value to God. And it's so important for us to remind all of us, inclusive, but more so especially the lonely, you are valuable to God. And when we reassure the lonely of their value, we are assisting them in overcoming the feelings of insignificance. And that's why we encourage them to embrace their identity as God's cherished children. By doing so, it provided them with a renewed sense of purpose and reassurance that they have something of value to offer. The last fundamental aspect of support has to do with the letter T and it is to treat the lonely with respect and dignity. A success founder of the Mary Kay products once shared the greatest secret to her business success. She said, for every person she meets or works with, she imagines a sign hanging around their neck saying, please make me feel important. 
treating others with respect and dignity is a profound recognition of the inherent value and worth of the individual regardless of their background or experiences. And when we treat others with respect, we promote their emotional health by restoring their sense of self-worth and mitigating the negative effects on loneliness. And that's where they are more likely to develop a positive self perception and a sense of self-worth there. Jesus in Matthew chapter 22, 29 says, commanded us to love your neighbor as yourself. We are admonished to treat others with love and self-esteem as would as we would wish to be treated ourselves. But have you ever encountered someone, you know, someone's aura, oh, I tell you, make you feel dreadful? Or sometimes the look they look at you, are just certain look, you know, oh, it makes you like, huh? Or someone who said or did something to make you feel small and not good enough. I'm sure we have encountered that. But the question is, are we doing that? I pray not. Maybe be very conscious. Let us not fall into this category that may we be reminded of the age. It says this, at the end of the day, people won't remember what you say or did they will remember how you make them feel. Let us make every effort to treat people, especially the lonely, with respect and dignity. And that's where may we use affirming language and avoid derogatory or judgmental words or look. Speak words that uplift and encourage and treat them with the same respect and dignity you would desire for others, for yourself. The rule is this, you don't want others to speak in such a way to you, then you don't do that to someone else. Whether in our anger, whether even it may just, it seems justified. Treat them as equals regardless of their circumstances of past mistakes. Sometimes, it's so simple when we read the Bible, do not judge others. But often, you know, because someone make a boo-boo, or maybe do a certain things, and it affect us, and then as a result, we become judging, judgy. Our look, uh, sometimes can be like a stare look. The look can make the person feel oh, uncomfortable, I feel so small. Even a big size. Oh. May we be careful. Let's extend grace and tolerance just as we want them to be extended to us. One hot day, there was this man by the name of Herman. It was so hot, he went for a nice swim in, in the sea. And then he cleaned up himself. Whoa, already, oh, that's a good day. And then he saw a sweating man. Now I'm perspiring. A sweating man and his two sons trying on a hot day to push a disabled car up and incline. And then two voices started yelling at each other in him. One said, hey, this is a golden opportunity for you to serve, for, you, for service. You ought to help them to push. The other voice protested. Simila, none of your business. Don't keep all. You will get yourself all hot and all dirty. Let them handle their own affair. Who asked them to go and drive a car? Herman finally yielded to his battle impulse and that's where he put his shoulder to the task. The car moved and keep moving. A simple thing then happened which Herman never forgot. 
the father of the two sons stuck out his dirty hands. And then Herman stuck out his too. And the father said to him, Hey, I'm very glad that you came along. You had just enough strength added to ours to make the thing go. So true, isn't it, brothers and sisters? There are many thousands of people struggling to get some heavy load over the hill, over the loneliness. And you and I probably have just enough strength added to this to make things go. You and I can make a significant difference in the lives of the lonely. Can I have the worship team? I play a word, a song that is appropriate. Just like a bridge, towering above the water, connecting between two places, two worlds. Can I say this? Without its support, the bridge would crumple under its own weight. It is the supports that give the bridge its strength and purpose. And in our lives, in our lives, we need support from others to overcome obstacles and bridge the gaps between people. And likewise, we also have the opportunity to support others to overcome the obstacles in their lives. We receive the support. We also have the opportunity to give support to others to overcome the obstacles in their lives. I pray this morning, let us be the bridges of support and strength, both receiving and giving the support that is essential for a thriving and connected community. May we remember the importance of support in our lives and let's resolve in our heart to be a support to others, to show kindness, to show deed of kindness to the lonely, to understand the lonely, to persist and be patient with the lonely, to pray for and with the lonely, offer connection to the lonely, and to treat them with respect and dignity.